Shabbat Shalom family, how are you? It's been a little bit since I put out a video, but uh, life gets busy and it doesn't mean that I'm not receiving from Father during these quiet times, but um, I apologize for the lights, by the way. It just means that sometimes I don't have anything to release or to say, and uh, so... On the 21st of August, he gave me something to add to this uh, that we've been working on in this series. Um, so, the you know, there's a lot going on. And I know I've been saying this in the videos, but he's doing a lot with all of us, you know, uh, some of us have been, you know, feeling like we're being skinned alive, etc. And I've said this, <laughs> but it's all part of this sanctification that's happening, you know, where we're struggling in areas that we just don't understand why we're struggling. And it's because Father is bringing up all of our junk. And if it seems like I'm being repetitious in these videos, understand that, you know, many times, you know, you see in the scripture where the apostles or even Yeshua himself, um, and also where Father was speaking even in the Old Testament, where he says, again, I say, you know, so again, I say, again, I say, again, I say, because... Sometimes, in the course of things, we get caught up in, in like the dealings of it, or we get just caught up in the turmoil of it all, and we forget that there's sanctification, that we're being perfumed like the incense, the frankincense, to be made ready for being used in priesthood you know in the days of Noah and we're going back to that because that's what this is getting the ark and I've heard even more prophets now actually coming out saying the exact words get in the ark <laughs> so it's nice to have that confirmation um, so but at any rate, I wanted to redo this because I asked the father again. I'm like, what's going on? What are you doing? You know, you're, you're kind of quiet. And, you know, I want to know exactly what's happening, what you're doing. So I'm going to read you what he said. Uh, and then I'm going to finish up on on getting the ark there's a flood coming because he wants me to get into the next uh the next thing that he wants to inform you guys of and it has to do with you know yes we're prepping okay yes we're we're um trying to collect for our natural needs but in the time of the provision there's a close walk with father that's required um, not that he wouldn't you know provide for us he's not that kind of a dad but you know um, it's just that you have to think that if we're, we're going through this purification that there's a reason Okay, and during the purification, you know, we, we got to look at it too, the sanctification, purification, whatever you want to call it, you know, it, it isn't necessarily about us, it is to clear out things so that he can have more territory within each and every one of us. 
to do what he needs to do. Because Father needs a body to work through, okay? And that body is us. So, let's just talk to the Father right quick, and then we'll, we'll get into this, okay? Um, so, anyway... Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for how you've been showing us with regard to this time of how much it actually is all about you, Father. So, Father, I just ask that you fill this mouth with your words, Father, that there be nothing but your authority and your truth coming through. Father, enable me to step back so that you, Yeshua, Hamashiach, in me is the one speaking and speaking to your people, Father. So I just pray, Father, with thanksgiving in my heart that you have total dominion and control, that you reign as king here, Father, and that you touch your people and you speak to them, Father. And also so that I may learn as you speak, Father. So I just thank you this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father, I pray. And um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Father, on earth and within us as it is in heaven, Father. Be it unto us according to thy word, Abba. Thank you, Father. Amen. Apologies for that little pause. I had to tend to something right quick. Okay, if you'll get your scripture out and turn to the book of Zechariah, C-E-C-H, not Zechariah, but Zechariah, and uh, go to the eighth chapter. And we're going to start in verse, this word was given to me August the 21st. So here it is, September the 2nd, okay? Um, so this is what he has to say, which, you know, from what I was able to discern about this is that, you know, he's given us some commands, but also it's getting into the ark and sanctification is happening and he's beginning to deal with the wicked in their system. Okay. So anyways, we're going to start in chapter eight. Verse 15, and this is Father's exact word as he spoke to this particular prophet, okay? So again, have I thought or determined in those days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah? Fear ye not. These are the things that you shall do, shall do, okay? Speak you every man the truth to his neighbor execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates okay these are commands these are not i'd like to see you try to do this he says this is what you shall do okay and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor And love no false oath, for all these things I hate, saith the Adonai. And the word of the Adonai of host, and that would be Yahuwah, Adonai Tsevaot. Tsevaot is the Lord of hosts. And that's the God of heaven's armies, right? Thus saith uh, excuse me, verse 18. And the word of the Adonai of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Adonai, Yahuwah, Tzavahot, The fast of the fourth, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast, Therefore, love, truth, and peace. 
so, you know, we're being called to fast more, to produce truth and peace within us, okay? That's the way I see that. Thus saith the Adonai Yahuwah Tzavot, it shall come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Adonai, and to seek Adonai Yahuwah Tzavot, I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Adonai Yahuwah Tzavot in Jerusalem, and pray before the Adonai. So that's that sanctification. Thus saith the Adonai Yahuwah Tzavot. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt or the talit or prayer covering of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. For we have heard that Elohim is with you. Okay, so, you know, there's some harvesting going on. All right. The burden or oracle, okay, chapter 9, of the word of the Adonai in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof. When the eyes of man, as of all tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Adonai, and Hamath, and, or excuse me, also shall border thereby Tyrus and Zidon, though it be very wise. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, okay, and this is where the systems are being dealt with, okay, and heaped up silver as dust and fine gold as mire in the streets. Behold, the Adonai will cast her out and he will smite her power in the sea and shall be devour she shall be devoured with fire ashkelon shall see it and fear gaza shall see it and be very sorrowful and ekron for her expectation shall be ashamed and the king shall perish from gaza and ashkelon shall not be inhabited there's a lot to say there, but I'm not going to go into it. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Okay. And I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remaineth, even he, shall be for our Elohim. And he shall be as governor or leader in Judah and Ekron as Jebusite. I advise you guys to go in your strongs and look up these names and to see what they mean. And I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passeth by, and because of him that returneth. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more. For now have I seen with my eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the full of an ass, and I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow, bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. And here's another directive. Turn to you 
the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Okay. Places of refuge. All right. Even today, I do declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, in other words, teaching us how to praise and worship, filled the bow with Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Adonai shall be seen over them. Pretty cool, huh? And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Adonai Elohim shall blow the trumpet, or the shofar, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. And the Adonai of hosts shall defend them. See, that's a, those places of refuge, you guys. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. Okay. And they shall be filled like bowls, and as the corners of the altar. See, this is these are things that happens when we're in the ark. Okay. Our enemies are dealt with outside, but we're in and we receive from Father. Okay. And the Adonai, their Elohim, shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Okay. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make young men cheerful, and new wine with the mates. Now chapter 10 this speaks to me of this outpouring coming okay where it's prophesied in joel and acts all right let's continue ask ye of the adonai rain in the time of the latter rain okay not rain like r-e-i-g-n r-a-i-n outpouring so the adonai shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field okay and this is you know us who are faithful okay and you know i don't know about you but i'm still being purged all right so let's look at verse two and continue on for the idols have spoken vanity and the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams they comfort in vain, therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. My anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Adonai of hosts, okay, Adonai Yahuwah Tavo, all right. Um, I lost my place. Hold on. Okay. For the Adonai of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets, in the battle, and they shall fight, because the Adonai is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded or put to shame. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Adonai, their Elohim, and will hear them. Okay, so like even the prodigals are going to be brought in. That's beautiful, huh? And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though, as excuse me, as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Adonai. Hallelujah. 
I will hiss for them and will gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. In other words, come back to the Father. I will bring them also again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria. Okay, Egypt is the, the five senses. Okay, the focus on the five senses and the mind of man. And Assyria is the, the twisted forms of religion. Okay, uh, just, just a little tidbit on that. <clears throat> and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction. Ah, here we go, right? And shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. Are we seeing some of that going on right now? Hmm? And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. And I will strengthen them in the Adonai, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Adonai. Okay, so here is the, the two parts being dealt with, okay, once again. You know, because we've got these two timelines that are going to be running concurrent. Let's flip over to Revelation 8 again, you guys. Okay, so we left off just before the, the angels started sounding, if I'm not mistaken, in the last time that I... Um, took you guys through any teaching on this. Now the connection between, okay, Genesis 8 and Revelation 8 is very significant because like I said before, there were, you know, the sequences, all right, and then there was stuff going on in between the sequences of the events at the time of the flood, just like there is right now, okay? The seals have been being opened already. We're seeing the effects of this black horse as we're seeing the inflation come, okay, and um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've already talked about this. We're still waiting on this green horse, but I believe it's going to come after famine, all right, because of the, um, you know, when, when people die because they starve to death, etc., okay, which is going to bring plague on the land. But you have to understand, though, too, you guys, we are, <clears throat> most of us are in a leprous condition, spiritually speaking. You know, corruption, also in the old language, it, it means rotting or putrefaction as well. So that is what happens to like a human body, okay, when it has leprosy, okay, um, you know, things rot off, in other words. And so, through the prophetic, if you look at that, a leprous body, okay, the body that we are, <clears throat> there's parts that are full of decay, all right, disease, spiritual disease, and sin, and, and, putrefaction, okay, and these things are rotting off, but if you remember the story in the Gospels where Yeshua, where this man who had leprosy come to Yeshua and said, have mercy on me, 
<clears throat> and you know, when we say to the Father, "Have mercy on on me," it, it's that humbling. Okay, it's it's that place of repentance. Okay, so when this man came to Yeshua, and said that Yeshua is, you know, and I'm a paraphrase, he's like, you know, what would you like for me to do for you? And this man said to him, if thou will make me clean. And that's what we're asking Father to do, right? Cleanse us from all sin and all corruption and all of our self and all these things that are rotten about us, right? And what was Yeshua's answer there? He said, I will be thou clean. <laughs> so we, you know, we can, we can draw from that and know that because the sanctification is happening, if we're like submitting to the process <clears throat> and we're, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> and we're repentant, his answer is, I will help you. I will be thou clean. I will cleanse you. Okay? So that's what this, with the the golden altar, okay, with the frankincense, that's what is happening, okay, with us right now, you guys. And just, sorry about that alert. Just like it was back in the days of Noah, Okay, you know, we're being called into that place of Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is the place of the ark. Where his protection and his provision can be made. Good night, Irene. So... As it was, you know, when, when Abba shut the door on that small remnant that was in the ark, so it's going to be very soon, okay, very soon. Because when this sequence <clears throat> of these trumpets comes, we're going to have to be tucked away in the ark. Now, I know a lot of pre-trib rapture people are going to be like, I'm shutting her off. She doesn't know what she's talking about because we're not going to be here for the tribulation. We're not going to be here, da, 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 okay? I'm talking about trumpets, which are judgments and woes. I'm not talking about tribulation. And if we're in the ark with the Father, these things will happen around us but not affect us because provision will be made. Protection will be made. Go back and read Psalm 91. So at, at this point, okay, going back to the word that father just gave us in this place. Okay. We have the one timeline moving forward through the sequences. Okay where there's those that are in the ark, okay? And these kind of things are happening. Then we have those on this other timeline where it's terrifying, okay? And these things are happening. And, and you know, it, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Father, where? One second. <laughs> okay. The other day, the father showed me one of those little flash visions. Okay. And I'll tell you guys, it shook me up. And it, it made me really look at myself. 
because in this little vision, I was standing outside the ark, okay? And I saw the door. I mean, like I was like right against the ark. The ark was like right here. And I saw the door come into my field of vision and shut. And I was outside. And the sense of doom and terror that shot through me is something that I have never, ever felt before. Now, sometimes when I get visions or dreams, I experience those events. So I can relate how it feels because I knew that when when that arc door shut, there wasn't anything I could do. It was done. It was a done deal. Okay. And I knew that I was going to die. That just plain and simple. And I felt so small and so helpless. And so that being said, you know, it, it made me check my own self check my own where I need to, to do some more work within myself. But when I go through those kind of visions or dreams, you know, a lot of times the question comes, what would you do? Like when I saw the walls of water come over the United States and just stop, that question was asked, what would you do? What would you do? Where would you run? Where would you go? You know, and it's the same thing if we find ourselves outside a closed door in the ark. Because back then, in the days of Noah and when they, when Abba shut that door and sealed them in, all those people outside were carried away. They all perished. And so you have to understand that, you know, we're in this time again, when you got all these prophets, okay, we're all saying, get in the ark, get in the ark, get in the ark, get in the ark. Okay. Psalm 91 the secret place of the most high, where there's even more confirmation as to if we obey and we get in that intimate place with the father and we get ourselves prepared, perfumed, okay, spiritually, our hearts and our minds and, and everything, okay, all the rewards. And it even says in there that these things will happen around you but will not come near your dwelling place. Okay. Just like it was in the days of Noah, the sequence of events and the destructions that went with each sequence is the same as these trumpet sounds. Okay. <clears throat> they each have their own destruction. And it goes layer upon layer, okay? Just like it was, just like I had said before, to watch that um, oh, Genesis Apologetics flood sequence video. Even the geology of the earth proves what I'm saying to be true in the, the record, okay? The soil record and where the fossils are. And bone fragments of fossils from mud tsunamis and all kind of apocalypse going on on the planet. This same thing is going to happen again. And it was at the end of the flood, okay, that the mountains came up that caused the water to sheet off the earth. During this time, this is my own belief from my own study, you know, that I've been doing. I'm saying me saying this, not thus saith the Adonai, okay? Is that 
because of these earthquakes that are going to be taking place, I believe that the land is going to be pushed back together again. Because it says that the hills and the mountains will be moved out of their place. The only way for that to happen is by tectonic plate moving. Okay, so that's just the food for thought. But I will say this, okay, I will say this, that at the end of the flood sequence video, okay, Abba was declared king regent over all things, okay? Noah built an altar to the father and declared him as king of the earth, of the universe, okay? At the end of these trumpets, father is declared the king again, okay? So, this is what I have. I mean, I could have went all on it and explained every single meaning of every single trumpet, all these things and why this and why that. Okay. I could have done that. But understand the main focus is getting in the ark. Okay. Father's judgments, his woes and his judgments are going to happen to this earth. To the wicked, to the systems. Everything is going to get dealt with, okay? Our main focus is to get to where we find that place at the feet of Elohim Most High, El Elyon, okay? Adonai Ori. That is the place where we have got to focus ourselves, you guys. And that means becoming stripped. Okay? Because when all of time comes together, okay, everything past, present, of and future is going to exist in a nano moment. The power of that, okay, that's the silence in heaven in the space of a half an hour. And I already told you where you could find that in the Strong's Concordance, okay? And this is all going to happen before the Antichrist even comes. <laughs> You guys, okay? This is Father. This is Father calling us into that place with Him. So that He can bring His righteousness to us. So that we can be cleansed of, of all the things within ourselves. And believe me, I'm going through dealings my own self like I've said and I've said and I've said and I said that I'm still in a season of correction and all the junk and garbage that's in me is being dealt with and and I can either hang you know fight to hang on to complaining about or self-justification or keeping my critical judgmental attitude if I have one or, or, you know, not wanting to submit to the father, not wanting to, to submit to anybody, you know, no pastor, no nothing, which is rebellious lawlessness within us that needs to be burnt out. You know, all these things within ourselves, you guys, we can either choose to hang on to those or we can let go of them. And, and that kind of thing is worked out at the Father's feet, on his brazen altar, okay? And sometimes we feel the fire of that, and, and it hurts so bad. You know, there's times when I've been in dealings with the Father, and he's just been burning me alive, and I've sobbed my way through it, and I told him, it hurts, Papa. It hurts, but thank you. I praise you for it, okay? And that, you know, 
And he also, not only just the dealings, and I don't want to just focus on the dealings part, but there's also places where he's bringing healing to us. You know, so that when those things are healed, the strongholds of the demonic can't even, can't even remain. We get deliverance there too. Okay. So this is where we're at. Get in the ark. Yes. Prepare for natural necessities. Okay. Stock whatever up that you can. Get your rain catchment. Get your generators. Get whatever it is. Okay? And bear in mind that, that you might be called upon to share what you have for those children that the Father will bring. Don't be self-centered about it. I hear that from a lot of preppers. Oh, well, you know, you come knock on my door. You're going to get turned away. Is that Yeshua? Whenever you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you, you do it unto me. So, you guys, this is what I have today. Okay, and this is the end of this, this teaching. Just remember there's two timelines. We can either be in a glorious time with Father... Or we can be in the most scary, most terrorizing time on that other timeline. We can make that choice. Choose you this day, right? So keep pressing into the Father. Keep doing what He tells you to do. And if He tells you to do something outlandish, like pull up stakes and go into the middle of nowhere, do it. Because he's calling his children out into the wilderness, too, and into the mountains. Away from everybody and everything. Why? So that he could protect us. So that he could provide for us. Okay? So, you know, I know that a lot of us are feeling a lot of anxiety, pressure, um, urgency. Some of us are, are developing fear. But don't fear. Don't fear. Don't get into fear. Because fear will make us do crazy things, okay? And that's not from the Father either, all right? So may the Father bless you richly and hold each and every one of you in particular in the palm of his hand, nestled close to his heart. Get in that secret place, you guys. Go back over this material. Watch these videos from start to finish if you need to, okay? Read Psalm 91. And understand that just because somebody's doctrine might say things are going to be a certain way doesn't mean that it's right. Okay? So anyway, you guys, trust the Father. Get close to Him. Pray. Get, get a prayer life. Read the scripture because that is preps also, which is more important than any of the other preps that we could do. All right? So that's it. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Love you much. And we'll see you next time. We'll be going into the next lesson very soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.